Hey guys, this is Brian with Westcott Woodworks. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make quarter round and shoe molding. Um, both are used in furniture and inside of homes, um, usually attached to the baseboards to hide the gap that goes around hardwood floors uh, as well as other types of flooring. But anyway, I'm going to be using a couple different pieces of machinery today. This one, the table saw with the zero clearance insert plate. Uh, if you don't know how to make one of these, I've got a video up that shows how to do that because uh, that will be real helpful with making this stuff uh, since they're small pieces and you don't want any tear out. I'll be using a Freud uh, Thin Curve Glue Line Rip Blade. It's got alternating teeth, one uh, flat and then the next one is a double bevel cut uh, and then another flat and they just keep alternating but it's really good at ripping through stock that's up to an inch thick um, which we're going to be less than that with a quarter round of shoe molding. It'll be right close to three quarters of an inch thick. Um, the next piece of machinery is going to be this router table here. Uh, this has got a Freud three quarter inch uh, round over bit with a bearing on the top. Um, if you have a router table um, and it has a fence like this where it's attached on, you know, all the way across, I would recommend using five quarter lumber uh, riding the workpiece up against this bearing uh, and then using a thickness planer to plane it down to the right size which is what I'm going to do um, otherwise unless you put a, another piece up against this edge of the fence uh, if you start out at a true quarter inch three quarters inch thick like this piece is I'll try and give you an example if you run it through here and it cuts this flush at the top when it gets to this other side of the fence, you can see that there's a gap between the workpiece and the fence. So unless you cut something that you can attach to this fence, um, this is known as joining the, the workpiece. Um, so you've got an unfinished edge here that you're cutting off when it runs through to the finished edge. Um, the only way I know to do that is either have a router table that you can set these to different uh, settings you know this one further up and that one further uh, back uh, or vice versa um, otherwise use something thicker run it through here against that using the bearing and then plane it down with a thickness planer um, so I'm gonna get started after you've run this through the thickness planer you can see it looks a whole lot better now that it's towards a quarter of three quarters of an inch you're going to go back to the table saw set your fence to three quarters of an inch uh, and you're going to run it through here now this is a test piece and I'll, I'll go over a little bit more why that is um, you're always going to want to run at least one of those through um, just to make sure everything's set up right uh, so I'm just going to rip this off in the table saw and then we're going to go over to the miter Now that we've got that cut, we're going to go to the cross cut saw here. Um, the thing with quarter round is you tie a lot of pieces together um, to make it you know, fit in a whole room or to wrap around corners or different things. So the key thing with this, um, unlike other types of molding, is you want to make sure that this bottom edge here uh, and this side edge going up here are the same. That way in case, you know, when it's getting installed, if this if you have one piece that's facing this way and you have another piece that's facing you know the opposite direction um, you just want them to line up otherwise you're going to have to do sanding to get rid of you know the, the rough edge that's there um, so we're going to go ahead this like i said was a sample piece so we're going to just cut it into a couple pieces and match them up and make sure that everything fits before we you know make any more uh, on the cross cut saw i've got another freud blade here this is their thin kerf uh, cross cut blade kind of their bread and butter uh, blade of cross cutting if you ask me but uh, I like it because it cuts real fast and smooth it's got the carbide tips on it um, one thing I really like about it especially for small pieces like this is I don't want to have to deal with a bunch of tear out 
uh, on every piece I'm trying to tie together, especially if you're wrapping around a bunch of corners. You know, every time you have tear out, you, know, you can sand the little things off, but ultimately it tore out part of the piece of wood. And so uh, whether you're using wood filler or what have you, um, it's just nice when you don't have to do that all the time. So we're going to go ahead and uh, cut these. I'm going to cut the end off just in case this wasn't square before. And I'm going to cut another piece here. And we're going to flip that over um, so that the two faces got flipped uh, and try and match them up. So here we go. got my two pieces that I cut as you can see uh, there's not really any tear out on these pieces um, there's a little bit of fluffy stuff there but you can just wipe that away with your finger um, you don't have those huge chunks missing like you do at other times so this, all right so this this piece was on the cross cut saw like this uh, so what I'm gonna do to check out and see how how well my my measurements and cutting were so I'm going to flip this smaller piece end over end, flip it so the round pieces are facing the same way. Just kind of line up all three, or both flat edges and the round edge. Just see what it looks like. If, it, if it's, you know, not matching up, then what that means is uh, this edge right here and this edge here are not the same measurement. Uh, if they're not, that means you're going to have a lot of sanding to do. And that's my least favorite part of any project is sanding and finishing. Believe it or not. Uh, for the shoe molding, we're going to be using the table saw with the same setup we had before, the miter saw, and the uh, router table here. We're actually going to be using the same three quarter inch bit. Uh, the only difference really between shoe molding and quarter round is that um, the standard quarter round is going to be three, inch, three quarters of an inch thick here, three quarters of an inch thick here. Uh, and then it's got this this uh, quarter round radius on it. Shoe molding, uh, the difference is going to be it's three quarters of an inch thick, but it's only a half inch wide here. Uh, so that's the only difference. Uh, the nice thing about shoe molding is like we just went over before, where you want to make sure both uh, these edges are the exact same. Shoe molding doesn't matter um, because you know they're quarter inch different. Um, the only thing that does matter is if you're going to run some for a project and you don't have enough and you have to run more, you need to make sure that you have your table saw uh, set at exactly three quarters of an inch or, or a half inch. Uh, otherwise, the pieces aren't going to line up. So we're going to go ahead and run a, a piece of this shoe mold. Alright, so we've got our piece here rounded, so we're going to go ahead and take it over to the thickness planer. Same thing, we're going to take it down to three quarters of an inch. For the shoe molding, it's going to be three quarters of an inch thick, which is, that's what this is now. And we're going to cut it a half inch wide. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that now on the table saw. Uh, the only, you know, the best way to do this, if you have some sort of jig, I've got these gripper things, uh, and they work good. Um, but don't, don't ever try and run your, your fingers through here holding this piece. Um, not, not unless you want to lose a few of them. Um, have some sort of jig or, or safety mechanism set up to where you can run this stuff safe. Okay, so here you go. This is your finished piece of uh, shoe molding here. So you've got the the half inch uh, width down here is three quarters of an inch thick. Um, you can see there is a pretty big difference here when you hold the actual quarter round up next to it. But uh, again, just make sure you have a or spend your time setting the stuff up, uh, so that way you don't have to do a bunch of sanding and different things later. Um, so be safe, no matter what you're doing or, or different types of molding you're doing. Um, use jigs and use all the guards and different things that you have. Um, that or at your expense that you can use uh, just to keep you safe. I uh, hope you found this interesting that it helped you 
uh, at least making some small amounts of trim for different projects. But uh, if you have any questions, put them in the comments box below.